Dr. Graham, would you share with us the procedures to follow when acquiring the spec phantom images? Yes. Let's look at the first slide. One of the first steps in preparing these Im images is to verify that all camera calibrations are current. So that would involve checking to see that the center of rotation is correct, that the high count floods that are used uh, for the intrinsic as well as the collimator on studies and so on. All of those need to be up to date. Next step is to prepare the phantom and that simply involves adding the radioactive material and you need to be sure that the phantom is thoroughly mixed. Then you need to carefully position the phantom in order to get good tomographic images and then finally process them after you've acquired them and it's exceedingly important that you carefully review these images and uh, once you're satisfied then you can submit these to the ACR. I put in this slide just to remind you that it's exceedingly important that the phantom be thoroughly mixed. This may be an interesting picture, but it's not the kind of distribution that you would want to use for, for tomographic studies. Do you have any recommendations about the positioning of the phantom? Yes, I do. First, you want to be sure that a metal plate is not present in the pallet. Some of the older tables have a metal plate. So what you need to do is simply move the detector to a position underneath the pallet and then look at the P-scope image and establish that in fact there's nothing that is attenuating the photons that are coming from the phantom. The next step is to use a bubble level to be sure that the phantom is horizontal. This is also very important. I carry with me some 3 by 5 cards and fold them uh, and put them under the edge of the phantom if I need to lift up one side or the other. Here's an example of a configuration when I'm doing this horizontal positioning. You see the bubble level on top and I simply want to call your attention to the cold rods that are in the bottom of the phantom. Those are used for measuring the spatial resolution. There are some cold spheres that are used for measuring contrast. And then finally in the top you have a uniform section and that's of course for evaluating uniformity of the phantom. The second part of the positioning step is to be sure that the phantom is oriented properly in the left-right dimension. Once you have corrected the left-right position, then you need to use some tape to tape the phantom in place. Here's an example of how you would do the positioning in the left-right direction. You'd move the detectors to zero or 180 degrees and then simply check to be sure that it is oriented properly. The image on the right shows you what happens if the phantom is not positioned correctly and that would produce poor images because as a part of the evaluation you have to add some of the transfer slices together and that would certainly be a problem if the phantom was tilted like it is in this picture. What should the facility be looking for when evaluating images for submission? Let me just go through the basic steps that are involved. First of all, you would want to look at the planar images to be sure that they're uniform and the resolution images. For a planar system, the resolution images are bar pattern images. For tomographic systems, we actually use the ACR phantom in order to measure or to evaluate the spatial resolution. The second step is to look at each of the slices that are reconstructed, each of the transverse slices, and see if they're uniform. In addition to evaluate uniformity, uh, you have to prepare a two centimeter thick slice in the top part of the phantom to evaluate the uniformity. And you simply look at that image to see if there are any artifacts that are present. The next step is to look at the contrast in the phantom and we do that by taking two slices that go through these cold spheres and adding those together. And again we look for how many cold spheres are actually visible in this image. And then finally we look at the spatial resolution. 
Well, spatial resolution images involve adding five centimeters of the rod sections together so that you can evaluate the spatial resolution. What are some of the common problems in the phantom images that are submitted for nuclear medicine accreditation? I picked out a number of examples. I want to show you some images that are satisfactory and some are not satisfactory, so you will have some idea about how your images should look. The first slide that I have here shows you some images for, for a planar system. And if you look on the left, you notice that the uniformity is satisfactory. On the right is the bar pattern image and the resolution is satisfactory. You can see even the smallest bars on this particular phantom. However, the thallium images, which are shown underneath, uh, are not quite as good. That would not mean that the, that the camera would fail the program as far as accreditation is concerned. But nevertheless, there is some limitation. Notice, for example, that on the left side you see an area of decreased intensity. So obviously there's a tube that is slightly out of balance. On the very right side, you see a tiny little white spot that's most likely a defect in the formatter. On the right side, you see the image, and if you look carefully, you'll notice that the resolution of the technetium bar pattern is better than that of thallium. But that's not surprising. That's what you would expect for the lower energy photons. This is from a different camera, and here you see very good uniformity in the technetium image. In the thallium image, in general, the uniformity is satisfactory in the center, but you notice that there's an edge out to the left and in the bottom where there's reduced intensity. This could be due to the fact that the person who was acquiring the data did not have the source far enough away from the detector. Uh, if that is not the explanation, then of course they would need to have this camera service to correct this particular problem. I want to call your attention to this particular image. It's for the same camera that I just showed you. But notice that in parts of the image, for example in this quadrant, that the resolution isn't as good as it is in other parts. And actually that the spots where the resolution is poorer is associated with the tubes in the camera. This is just a natural result of the engineering changes that were made to produce better resolution. So it's not surprising. You shouldn't be puzzled by this in new cameras. And that's where you see it most often. Now from this uh, system, we have two images. The planar image here is very nice and uniform for technetium. And Head 2, however, on this dual head system is not quite as good. There is a small spot of decreased intensity down at the bottom. And also there are a couple of artifacts. Those are actually bad pixels in the correction maps. That would not mean that the system would fail accreditation, but it should be corrected as, as soon as possible. The image on the right shows you the spatial resolution. And this, of course, is obtained with the spec phantom. And this particular picture then shows you how the phantom should be positioned. You simply want to position it in the center of the collimator. If everything looks good up to this point, then the next step would be to do the tom tomographic study. After you have completed acquiring the data and have reconstructed the images, the next step then is to look at the individual reconstructed images. And you notice, for example, you can just barely see this sphere on this image, but of course down here on a later image you see it much more clearly. So that is not an artifact. You see in general that the images are uniform, a little bit noisy, but that's to be expected with these very thin slices. So it's, a care it's important to carefully look through each of these slices. Now this is the set of images that I talked about earlier. This is the uniformity image, which is two centimeters thick, and you see that it's quite nice and uniform. 
On the right is the contrast image. This is only two slices thick, but it's right through the cold spheres, and you see five of the spheres, so this is very good. In the image uh, in the bottom left side, you see the spatial resolution. This is tomographic aspect resolution. And you notice now that some of the smaller rods are not visualized as they were in the planar image. But that's to be expected. And so normally you usually lose two of these rods when you do the tomographic study and reconstruct with a hand filter. So that's not surprising. In the thallium image, we have some concern because we can now see reduced intensity in the tubes. And you can see the tube pattern rather clearly. In the image on the left from head one in thallium, you see that there's a hot spot. And also notice that in this position and in this position, there are two pixels that are not working properly. So it would be proper to have this camera serviced before you acquire tomographic images. Here is the planar image for this particular uh, camera, this particular dual head camera, uh, again showing good resolution of the bars. This is a planar image on a spec system. You notice that the thallium images are not quite as good. The contrast isn't quite as good. And this you would expect, again, because of the lower energy of the thallium uh, photons. <coughs> The single slice images look very good. Uh, you notice that this is quite uniform. However, I want to call your attention to the fact that you can actually see three of the spheres in this particular image and possibly even in this one since we know where to look. The set of summed images is satisfactory from the uniformity standpoint but not satisfactory from the contrast standpoint. Remember I said we could see three spheres, but here we only see two, and even the second one is not visualized very well. So this would really not be a satisfactory contrast image. And also you will notice that more of the rods have disappeared. Uh, the difference between these two images, the planar and the tomographic image, is quite a, quite a bit different. Here's the same camera, but in this case, the images were acquired with thallium. And you notice some artifacts in the center. There are no spheres in that location, so you could tell right off that this is not going to produce satisfactory images. And sure enough, the summed images demonstrate that there's a, a significant artifact in the center. This would certainly be crucial in cardiac imaging. Uh, here you see uh, a couple of spheres, but again, the second sphere is barely visualized. And you see only one set of rods, only the largest rods as compared to the planar resolution images. So this is clearly not satisfactory. Now I show you still another camera. In this particular case, the uniformity of head two is not acceptable. It's fairly uniform in the center, but not out towards the edge. So I would not even start to acquire an image in a camera that had this kind of uniformity in one of the detectors. The reconstructed image uh, is not good. You see an artifact here, a, slightly increase, a slight increase in intensity. You see another increase in intensity here, even though you see uh, five of the spheres and you see some loss of spatial resolution, but not significant as compared to the planar image. But these artifacts would be of some concern in these thallium images. This is still another camera, and I quickly show you that there are some serious artifacts in these individual transverse slices. So I would not expect a good image, and in fact, that is exactly correct. I see some strong artifacts, in the summed image for uniformity. I see an artifact here in the contrast image. There is no sphere at that location. And you see that there's a significant loss of, of spatial resolution here. I might add, by the way, while I'm on this slide, the nature of, of reconstructed images is that the some intensity is lost in the center. You don't see the rods as well in the center as you do at the edge, and that's because of the attenuation correction software. 
So that's not a defect as far as the cam this particular camera is concerned. Here we see an image that is not attenuation corrected. Notice that the center is much cooler than the edge. And we require that attenuation correction be done on these images because otherwise they're very difficult for our reviewers to, to interpret. So the uniformity looks satisfactory, but again, this cold spot is due to the failure to use attenuation correction. The contrast is fairly good. These profiles are a part of another part of the uh, proceedings or the procedures, I should say, that you're using. But notice this. In the spec resolution image, there are no rods that are visualized. And I must tell you, I'm not quite sure why we see absolutely none of the rods. It could be due to the fact that they added the wrong slices together. It could be due to the fact that the that one of the corrections is not proper, that is the center rotation correction, which causes a loss of resolution. So there are a number of things that could explain this, but obviously this is not satisfactory. Mm -hmm. The last set of images that I want to show involves gallium. Notice that the uniformity is quite satisfactory for both technetium and for gallium. The resolution isn't as good in the gallium image, that is the planar resolution, but that's what you would expect with photons of lower energy in the gallium, in particular the 93 keV photons. But you notice now that the reconstructed sum images are not as good. You see an artifact here in the uniformity image. You see a faint artifact in the contrast image. You see a significant loss of resolution in the reconstructed rods. And so for that reason, this is really not satisfactory and it would be appropriate to have this camera serviced or new uniformity correction maps acquired uh, prior to collecting the tomographic data. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to show these images. I hope they'll be helpful. I've tried to select images where the results were satisfactory and would be appropriate to see if those agree with your films and also show you some specific problems that I have seen in the images that I've reviewed. Thank you, Dr. Graham, for a great presentation.